Nowhere are the issues of life, death, ethics, governance, hope, and tragedy moving at quite the velocity as within the boundaries of Quebec. With the twin tragedies at Lac Magantique and Ile Vert still swirling and an election looming, issues of corruption, the Charter of Values, and euthanasia are swirling. In this special focus on Quebec, we'll seek the spiritual thread running through all these stories in these extraordinary times. This is Context, a look at life beyond the headlines. questions arise during an election campaign, often in both official languages. But here's one you won't hear within most news analysis. What are the spiritual dynamics at play in Quebec in this highly charged election campaign? This program is about getting a big picture from a God's eye view on La Belle Provence. We're going to look at Quebec from many angles today to see what lessons we can glean across Canada. And let's begin with an event from last year that infused the name of a small Quebec town into the national consciousness. July 6th, 2013, 1.15 a.m. A 74-car freight train rolled out of control in the small Quebec town of Lac Magantique. When it slipped the tracks, its manifest of crude oil exploded with a blast radius estimated at one kilometer. 47 lives were lost, 42 confirmed, five presumed. The oil released what one witness called a tsunami of fire leveling 30 buildings. 150 firefighters worked two days to extinguish the blaze, leaving anguished families and a devastated community to heal and to rebuild. With us now to talk about spiritual realities following that disaster is Louise Benjeron. Louise is on staff at St. Agnes Catholic Church in Lac Bigantic, where the memorial service for the victims was held. Louise, thank you for joining us. Ça me fait plaisir. Condolences for your town's tragic loss have included a special apostolic blessing from Pope Francis at the Vatican, and today we bring you ours. But Louise, uh, tell us, what is one of the strongest memories you take from that awful month of July? We, were, we belong to this, uh, we felt the need for the people to gather, to, to be together, to be close to the families whose uh, victims were not... Um, so these people needed to support each other and they, they didn't have the opportunity to do it at this time. So this celebration was a turning point at this time during this strategy, I mean at the beginning, at the early time. And this was very touching, moving to this all, to see all this support between each other. So the church were, was very full. There were lots of people to celebrate, to commemorate these victims. So the elements of the Mass, the gathering of the church, that helped people make sense of the deep grief they are still in? Yes, so slowly. It's obvious that at this time, during this commemoration, so the, the, the bodies were not found yet, which made it difficult. So this support was very important to, it was very important for people to gather. This was a privileged time for them. And we realized we after that that it was very important to have such support. There were even people who didn't want to come, but finally they came and they didn't regret because this was a support which was much needed. And Louise, what are the spiritual needs now of the families there in grief? The needs are to be listened. It's, uh, my role is really to meet these people who really need to be um, supported during this, uh, this grief. So what we need is to listen. They really need to tell their story again and again to say what they experienced. For them, it's, it's still really difficult. And this has become an election issue on who will help pay for the recovery. 
What is your hope at the end of all of this, that the lessons we will have taken away from this? So, the lessons are numerous. It's obvious that for the um, ecology, it's a big problem. So, we'll need to, to think about uh, the um, ecology. And at the same time, we need to remember that we need to support each other. We, are, we need relationships, we need each other, so it's not just in difficult moments that it's all the time. So personally, I remember, this is what I hear a lot. Louise Benjeron, thank you very much, and may God bless you as you continue to help the grief in Lac Megantic's tragedy. Thank you very much. Just a few months after the derailment and the province still reeling, another tragedy turned the nation's eyes to yet another small Quebec town. A lone staff member was on duty when fire broke out at the residence to have nursing home in Lille Vert, Quebec. It was just after midnight, January 23rd, 2014. Intense cold created extraordinary problems for firefighters. As the fire spread rapidly through the wooden building, Residents, many depended on wheelchairs and walkers, scrambled desperately to escape. 32 died. Another 15 were injured, including two firefighters. The investigation continues as another small Quebec town is left to mourn, to cope, and to struggle for answers. With us now is Father Gilles Frigon from St. John the Baptist Catholic Church in Ile Verte. He's joining us from Ramouski. Welcome, Father, and thank you for joining us. My pleasure to be here. Father, I want to offer our deepest sympathy to your community. In your village of 1400, these are the grandparents, the great-grandparents who died in the fire. What does the Christian faith say into such deep loss? Well, the Christian faith is providing hope. It reminds us well that the life is not, a, it's not insensitive. Everything is going through the passion of the Christ before it's going under the earth. We're going to celebrate uh, very soon in April the 20th, the rebirth of the Christ, reminding that life is not just uh, random. It can be happiness or sadness. Life uh, has lots of meaning. And everything is going through the rebirth of the Christ. Your church hosted this memorial service for the victims of the fire. What is the role now for you as their priest with the families who lost a loved one? So the, our role is to, uh, to uh, support them and to provide a uh, message of sympathy, condolences, in order to allow them to heal, to recover, and also to remind that, that the mysteries of the faith, we're not alone, that the Christ is with us in such um, in, uh, events happy happy events and uh, tragic events. And this tragedy does speak to all of us. Many Canadians have parents or grandparents cared for in seniors' homes. What should we learn from this tragedy? Well, listen, I think that this tragedy, like any other tragedies, have been uh, awful. It could be a car crash. I think that we can learn that life is very fragile. We should always uh, treat each other with lots of respect, care and love, and not um, take things for granted. We should always be very attentive to others. And we're looking at this story in the wake of the Quebec's current election. Is that need for elder care getting enough attention in the election? <laughs> Well, I can speak for the Isle Verte. There was lots of attention. We were very well treated and cared for, respected, well treated in uh, their elderly age. But now, so in regards to the provincial, I think we're doing all the efforts, but it's expensive. There's a price for everything. 
in all seniors' homes. So it's true that there is room for improvement in all fields. Father Gilles Frigon, thank you very much. And we wish you God's strength and peace as you continue to help the grieving families in Ilvert. Thank you likewise for this uh, message of sympathy. We receive them lots, with, lots of, with lots of joy. Thank you very much to all. Coming up, we'll talk about some deep social and political issues gripping Quebec. But Sheldon Neal, let's get our audience involved. That sounds very good to me, Lorna. And our question for you, our viewers in Quebec, especially across Canada and beyond our borders, and especially viewers outside the faith community, this question for you is this. Why is it useful to see news stories in a spiritual light? Please send your answers by phone, email, Facebook, or Twitter. Come on, be part of the conversation. Okay, Sheldon, up next. Two of Montreal's media voices take us on a tour of the big ticket election issues in Quebec as we look for the spiritual connections that bind them. Stay with us.